This is what happens when you add a little American V8 goodness to a British sports car. our regularly scheduled episode of Muscle Car of the Week to bring you the following story. What you're about to hear is true, only the color of the car has been changed to protect its originality. You see, as we were shooting this episode on the Red Cobra you saw in our introduction, it went back to the restoration shop for a color change back to its original color of green. So it's actually not this car we're talking about, it's that one, but we're going to show it to you in both red and green because we shot it both ways. So you follow me? One car, two colors, same price. Let's get back to the show. While we're not trying to confuse anyone, we felt this would be a good opportunity to tell the tale that is common to many vintage and muscle cars, and that is how they can change over time. This beautiful red 1964 Shelby Cobra was originally vineyard green, but entered the brothers' collection in bright red. So after much consideration, it was determined that this car should go back to vineyard green to be the correct way that it once was. We shot some of our footage when the car was red and the rest of our footage when the car was green. So we're gonna show it in both colors. The 289 Cobra was the successor to the 260, and before the 260 V8, these cars ran around England being powered by six cylinders dating all the way back to the early 50s. However, once Ford and Shelby got involved, these things became major players in SCCA racing. AC Cars was a British company that built roadsters which became popular with racers. The AC Ace and the AC Bristol had lightweight aluminum bodies making them good candidates for race cars, but Carroll Shelby spearheaded the plan to ditch the BMW designed six cylinder engine in favor of a V8 to make the cars more competitive on the racetrack. Chevrolet had a sweet 327 cube V8 in the parts bin, but they were too busy pushing the Corvette to get behind another two seat sports car. So Shelby turned to Ford and their high revving 260 V8 and the Cobra idea was born. He realized that the chassis and suspension weren't up to the task, so he enlisted the help of Ford to make some upgrades to handle the higher horsepower of the V8s to help make these things more competitive. After some major revisions, the 260 and 289 powered cars were unleashed onto the competition and the Shelby Cobra became known as a force to be reckoned with. This 1964 example is one of the 455 or so street versions of the legendary small block Cobra. This 289 started as a 306 horsepower Ford Windsor V8, but this one has been upfitted with a few goodies to boost the performance levels. Most noticeable are the dual four barrel carburetors to supply more air and fuel and the set of Ballinger headers which help the high compression 289 breathe better. Inside, the Cobra was not a place to be if you wanted a cushy ride. The interior is tight and comfort is minimal, but that's not why you buy a Cobra. The 289 V8 and the aluminum body are always hot topics when you're talking about Cobras, but it's hard to explain what it's like to drive this car unless you've actually been in one. Uh, for example, the seat doesn't adjust, the steering wheel doesn't adjust, there's no power accessories, no power brakes, the footwell is really tiny and the pedals are small, and even though they have an articulating mechanism, it's hard to get your foot on the right pedal. Besides the fact that it's got a race clutch, so the pedal on the clutch is very stiff, and the RPM range on this engine doesn't make torque until you get it kind of wound up. So if you were to drive this in traffic, 
you're fighting with that heavy clutch, you're trying to keep the RPMs up, you're struggling with the steering, so it's not really a fun car to drive in traffic, but if you get it out on a road course, that's a totally different story. Mm. That is a heck of a clutch. Believe it or not, one of the most challenging aspects of correcting the appearance of this car was locating the proper tires. The brothers' crew spent over a year to finally find a complete set of Goodyear Power Cushion Bias Ply 7.35 by 15 inch tires for the intricate wire wheels. After all, Shelby had a long relationship with Goodyear Tire, so these had to be right. When you have an authentic Cobra like this 1964 car, it's important to keep it all original. And frankly, we dig the vineyard green. Besides, red Cobras are kind of all over the place. According to the old song by the Rip Chords, the driver of the little Cobra passed all the XKEs and Stingrays in a road race, popped his Cobra out of gear, and coasted victoriously to the line. Thanks for coasting to the line with us and another great car from the Brothers Collection. And if you like these kind of stories, subscribe to our YouTube channel because we've got a lot more there. We'll catch you at the finish line next time. Thanks for watching.